Have you ever been confused about the difference between function, supplier, and consumer in Java? Now, if you're new to Java, or you're new to functional Java, it's quite likely that you will have come across these interfaces, these functional interfaces in Java, and wanted to know what the difference is. I'm Saeed, the Coder Grammar, and in this video, we're gonna look at the difference between these three functional interfaces from a practical perspective. All right, so let's get straight into it. So first of all, we have function, which maps X to Y. So it basically converts something to something else, okay? So let's just have a look at an example. So if we say function, and we say string to integer. Now I won't actually declare the body of this function because I just want to show you the declaration to begin with. So if we click on that, you can see that this exists in the Java util function package and it is declared as a functional interface, which means that wherever this is declared as a type, we can replace the usage with a Lambda or a method reference. Now, coming back to our function, we have two types declared here, two generic types. One is string and one is integer. So this is the type that you want to pass it. And this is the type that you want to return back. So you want to give it a string and you want to convert it to an integer and receive an integer back. So let's just delete this. All right, so functions with a capital F allow us to convert one thing to another. So we'll have a look at an example. In this example, we've got a HR system and we want to allow different companies using our HR system to be able to specify how they generate an employee ID. And we can use a function to do that. So we've got this method here, which returns an employee. So we've got a generate employee ID method, and we can pass it a person, a person who we want to become an employee. But different organizations may have different requirements of what that person's, that employee's ID will be in the organization, okay? So in order to not have to declare multiple methods for each company that's using this, we can just declare one method, but allow a function to be passed in that converts the person to a string, which is the ID, okay, the employee ID. So then in the actual method itself, we can create the new employee. We can set their email as you would normally from person. But to set the employee ID, we can say map to ID, which is our function dot apply. Because if you look at the function interface, it has an apply method, which takes the type T, which remember in our first example was a string, and it returns the type R, R for return, which was integer. In this case, it's person to string, which is the ID. All right, and then we just return that type. Now, the benefit of this is that if we had two different companies who were calling this and we had a person, now this person's blank normally would fill this in, but just for the sake of simplicity, we've just got a person there. And company one wants to generate an employee, but they want to use the email address uppercase as their ID. So they can just pass a lambda in place of the function here, function argument. So this, it shows how to map from a person. A person is pp and pp.getemail.to uppercase means that this function implementation would take the person, grab their email address, make it uppercase and say that's the ID. But company two, a completely different company, has a different requirement of how they store employee IDs. So their function takes the person and then grabs the person's email address and appends it to the person's name. So it'll be email plus name. That will be the unique ID for each employee. So what this functional type allows us to do is actually, instead of passing a value, we can actually pass a piece of code, which later on gets executed. So this piece of code that's declared here isn't actually executed at this point. It's passed down to the generate employee ID method which then takes that function and executes that function as and when it's required. So you can see that the kind of flexibility that using these functional interfaces provides. All right, so hopefully that made sense. And you can see that a function is used to convert from X to Y. In this case, we take a person and convert it to a string, but that could really be anything to anything else. And then you define how the mapping takes place inside the method. So in this case, you can see that the mapping is from person to a string. And this is another example where we implement the same interface. So we say person to a string, but in this case, we construct the string slightly differently to this example here. All right, so next up, let's have a look at the supplier functional interface. Now, a supplier supplies some value, it gives us something. Okay, now you might be thinking, well, if I have an object and I want to declare a functional interface or a lambda that just gives me something, why don't I just pass that thing down as it were? But the benefit is that sometimes it's costly to produce something, okay, that you only need in some situations. So instead of passing a constructed or generated value down to your method, you can declare a supplier, which means that you define the code required to generate the type or the value, but that's only executed if and when it's needed. 
All right, so let's have a look at an example here. So we've got a supplier with type string. Now let's just look at the signature first. If I click onto supplier, you can see that again, it's Java util function, just like function was, but the type only has one generic parameter and only has one method called get. So that means that it can provide a value of type T and calling the get method will return that value. Now it doesn't necessarily store that value. It might generate that value or it could even store that value. So it really depends how you implement this functional interface. So in our example, we've got a system where we create an account for an employee. And in the supplier, we pass an error message. We only need to use this error message if and when there is actually a problem. Okay, otherwise we don't need to use it. So here we say if e.getEmail equals null. So in other words, the email address is null, then we want to print out an error message. So in that scenario, we need to generate the error message. But if we don't find an error, we don't actually need to generate an error message. So here, for example, we would create the account. All right, so let's have a look at an example of where we are calling this. So here we have the create account method. And in the create account method, we pass in a new employee and then we pass in a lambda, which has no type parameters, no inputs. And as you can see, this doesn't actually take any input to the method here. The get method doesn't take any input, so that's empty. And it returns a string which says invalid employee at this particular time. Now, if we didn't use a supplier, we just pass the value in like this and we declared a string at the other end. This value would be evaluated here. So at this point, you would get the date time, okay, the local date time. And that would already be evaluated. And the two problems with that are one, are you evaluated the string which you didn't actually need at this point? The second is that you generate the date time at the point you've declared it here, not at the point it's actually used. And in theory, there could be a lot going on here which would actually create a time difference from when you're logging the error from your actual date time. So the benefit of using lambdas and functions is that they are lazily evaluated. They're only evaluated when they're needed with deferred execution. So the execution actually happens as and when it's needed. So this really doesn't get fully evaluated until it's actually needed when there is actually an error. So to summarize, so you might use a supplier because the thing that you want to generate is expensive, i.e. time consuming or resource intensive or you just want to do something later, like get the time. Both are benefits of deferred execution. So that's supplier. Supplier allows you to generate or to provide a value. So just quickly to recap, if you look at the function, it takes two type parameters, the thing that you want to convert from and the thing that you want to convert to. A supplier just has one type parameter, which is the type of value that this supplier supplies when you call the get method. All right, so let's move on to looking at consumers. Now, a consumer can take a value and do something with it and returns nothing. So let's look at an example. So here we've got a method called log employee. Now this takes an employee and logs it out, but it also takes a consumer, which is the logger, which also takes the employee and does some custom logging. And this is because in different places in your organization, in your code base, you might want to do different levels of logging or different types of logging based on what's required in that particular scenario. All right. And the consumer has an accept method. It accepts the type that you want to pass it. So in this case, we declare it to take the employee type and it just takes that employee type. And if you notice, we've got no return type here. It doesn't return anything. Let's just have a look at the signature. And the signature is void, just as we expect. So it has one type parameter, just like supplier. But in this case, it takes that type parameter. It's kind of the opposite of a supplier, and it doesn't return anything. Whereas a supplier doesn't take anything, but returns a value, okay? Now it also has an and then method, but we won't worry about that for this tutorial. So coming back to here, let's look at some examples of where we invoke these methods. So in the first instance, we want to log in detail, maybe for some tracing or something like that. So here we have our employee that we're passing in, and here we have our implementation of our consumer. Now, if you see this consumer takes a type E, which is the employee, and using that, it's a multi-line Lambda, it prints out the email address and the employee ID. Now, if we look at the employee type down here, you can see that that's pretty much all that the employee type has. It has an employee ID and an email address, and we print all of that out. Now in another scenario where we just need very basic information, we don't need a full kind of trace log, we can just call the log light method. And underlying, this still calls the log employee method, but here we pass it a slightly different lambda. This isn't a multi-line lambda. It's still a consumer that consumes the value E, and it doesn't return anything, but it prints out the email address. So here we have one implementation, which prints out the email and the employee ID. And here we have another implementation, which just prints out the email. Now again, printing something out means nothing is returned. It's just consumed. It takes the value E and nothing is returned. So a supplier will return a value to you, but won't take anything. 
a consumer will consume a value, you could consume it and do nothing with it. In this case, we consume it and we print something out, but we don't return any value. All right. And a function is for mapping from X to Y. So I think in practical terms, that pretty much sums up the difference between a function, a supplier and a consumer. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I will do my best to answer. If you found this video at all useful, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. That tells YouTube that this video might be useful to other developers. And if you want to see more tech tutorials, developer news, software development industry news, don't forget to hit subscribe. Thank you for watching.